Okay, here's an example of a trapezoid. And, of course, we have the approximating segment as part of the trapezoid. Now, does this trapezoid, uh, do the area and slope do a good job of telling us, uh, of giving us information about what's going on in this interval? Do they give us good information about whatever quantity might be represented by the slope and whatever quantity might be represented by the area? What do you think? What are some of the reasons you think it might or might not be so? You want to maybe list a couple of those. Okay, I've written down a couple of comments regarding the slopes. Uh, my comment is that we have widely varying slopes. Slope is positive here, negative here, pretty steep here, pretty steep here, um, levels off here. Uh, very little of the, the actual slope, uh, very, very few of the actual slopes are anything near the slope of the approximating segment at the top of the trapezoid. The average slope, which is the slope of our approximating statement, uh, approximating segment, uh, tells us very little about the actual slopes. So we're getting very little specific information about how the slopes uh, behave on this interval. That might or might not matter, depending what it is we're looking at, but often it will matter quite a bit. Also, the area under the curve is maybe 30% less than the area of the trapezoid. Okay, we got a little bit of curve above the trapezoid, but a big chunk below the trapezoid, and that chunk might be as much as, um, you know, well, big enough that the area under the curve is maybe 30% less than that of the trapezoid. That's maybe not totally useless. You know, 30% less is not a huge difference. It's not as drastic as a difference in these widely varying slopes, but it's also not a very good representation, and whether it's useful or not depends on the situation. So my question is, if we know how to evaluate uh, whatever this function is, we know how to find a y value for every possible x value, how can we improve our information for this interval? How can we get more detailed information um, to allow us to excuse me, to better represent what actually is going on on this interval with respect at least to what the graph can tell us. Well, uh, the obvious uh, solution might be to divide the graph into smaller intervals. Okay, so if I divide the graph like so up into smaller subintervals, then Could be that our average slopes stay much closer to the actual slopes. Certainly true on this first little interval. Now on the second one, well, yeah, we're varying some because we got a hump in the graph. On the third interval, there's some variation. Uh, fourth interval, we're pretty good. Fifth interval, we're pretty good. So you know, if you just draw the segments for the different intervals you see that in many cases they're pretty good, and in the other cases they're not nearly as far off as they were. So we have a much better picture of the slopes. And also, if you look at the total area under this broken line here, it's pretty darn close to the total area underneath the actual curve. Okay, so I'll make the statement that more subintervals give us much improved correspondence with the actual slopes, although there are places uh, where we're off, like on this second little subinterval here, uh, and drastically improved correspondence with actual areas. I think there's overall less than a 1% discrepancy in the areas. There's quite a bit more than a 1% discrepancy at some points between the slopes and the average slopes. Um, but uh, we still have much improved here and drastic improvement here. Much more could be said, but uh, we're going to just leave this as a good start. If we understand this picture and what it's telling us about correspondence between slopes and approximations and between areas and approximations, uh, we've got a good picture to build on. And I'll also say that understanding the nature of approximations uh, can or could 
perhaps lead in at least some circumstances to better design of real systems because real systems only approximate the ideal behavior we're trying to achieve. And that last statement is worth writing down for posterity. Real systems only approximate ideal behaviors.